Hi guys, this is jsnon.com and I'm here with the Nubia N1. It's a sort of mid-range battery phone with a metal shell and it was launched last summer and now it's time for a full review. It's priced at around $183, at least that's the price that goes around in the Indian market and comes with 3GB of RAM, 32GB of storage and a pretty solid body. Available in silver or gold, this is actually the first Nubia phone we test nice contact with this brand and as far as the design is concerned this is quite a beefy and heavy-ish phone with a metal unibody approach a pretty okay grip a rounded back and a pretty okay overall handling even with a single hand okay getting past that we have pretty comfy buttons on the side here they're quite big and have good feedback it's got a solid build this handset and very nice looking capacitive buttons here with the pulsing home one for example there's a 2.5d glass panel at the front also looking pretty hot and a shiny metal edge going all around the handset it measures 8.9 millimeters in thickness and weighs 190 grams which is quite reasonable for a 5000 milliamp hour battery phone compared to the Zen 4 Max for example that weighs 202 grams and measures 10.6 millimeters in thickness. In the end it's reassuring because it's so big and well built, comfy and that's about it. On the display front you get a full HD 5.5 incher with an IPS LCD LTPS panel with full lamination and pretty reasonably sized bezels. Now if you go to the gallery app you'll see that it actually serves as the one and only video player here. We don't have another one so let's enjoy video playback and judge this IPS LCD panel. Okay, so we got some pretty well calibrated colors. That's my first impression. Good brightness, wide view angles, and the contrast is also not that bad even in the sunlight. Now let's see what we're dealing with here. Under the microscope, we unveiled RGB stripes pixels, and then we went to the lux meter and got to 382 lux units, which is quite reasonable, quite good. And this makes us surpass the Huawei P8 and the Huawei G8, so we're doing fine. With this score, we also went below the LG Nexus 5X and the Motorola Moto M, so remember that. Now, of course, we also have settings for this screen, so let's check them out. We go to the display, we got the wallpaper, we got brightness, breath light, which is this pulsing light here with a variety of features, and then we got the options like saturation and hue, each with sub settings like glow, standard, soft or cool tone, natural and warm tone respectively. Other than that, there's the font size and special edge options. Let's check those out, so edge features. A bunch of gestures that involve either pulling from the screen down or to the side. So for example, if you hold the edge and swipe inward, you can trigger a variety of these home screens. And if you're in a window and want to uh, go past it, do something like this and you go to the previous window and that's only one example you can also do something like this to change the brightness and volume and clear the resources so gestures are included for the edges of the screen which is kind of nice overall the screen is quite solid so let's get to the other hardware now as far as the other hardware is concerned we're dealing with an octa-core mediatek helio p10 processor which is a familiar face we also saw it on the sony xperia xa for example there's an arm mali t860 gpu here 3 gigabytes of ram and 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage as well as a micro sd card slot luckily the phone runs like a charm there's no lag there's no problem here no matter how many apps you have open at the same time there will be absolutely no problem with the lag and the functioning of the device. Fluid UI and the gaming also checks out fine, including the one in Riptide GP Renegade, our typical benchmark game. The fluid interface is also aided by the quite solid Nubia UI applied on top of Android Marshmallow. So here we are with uh, Riptide GP Renegade, picking a quick race and this nifty track, and here we go. Nice looking so far, pretty solid controls, well rendered water, responds well to the controls and it's time to do a trick. Okay, so, so far so good, textures are fine, frame rate is good, so gaming is okay. And let's see if the benchmarks are also okay, we also did those and we start as usual with Quadrant. So in this benchmark we were able to go past the ASUS Zenfone Selfie and Yumi Max but score below the Galaxy S5 and the Huawei Honor 5X. Next up the ultra famous 
and 2 to 6 and in this test we went above the Motorola Moto G4 and also above the All UP8 Energy Pro but score below the Motorola Moto M and the Huawei Honor 7. Finally, in the gamers benchmark the score was a bit on the modest side, below 10k points. This is superior somehow to the Galaxy A7 and A5016 and below the first HTC One M7 and the HTC One A9, so not exactly impressive but typical for a mid mid ranger. In general it was below the Motorola Moto M and above the Moto G4 and the graphical aspect was rather neglectable. Now uh, if you want temperature we also measured that and achieved 36.1 degrees Celsius after running Riptide you saw before and then achieved 33.5 degrees Celsius after running GFX Bench another solid result so there's no overheating here. Now on the battery front you get a lithium polymer 5000 mAh unit sounds pretty impressive it does reverse charging and on paper should offer 1000 hours of standby or uh, 60 hours of talk time which sounds great now let's see how we did in our HD video playback in a loop test we achieved 11 hours and 53 minutes which is great but doesn't break any records if it was a battery phone it would go in the area of the Zenfone Max at 19 hours but here we stay closer to 12 hours we surpassed the respectable Xiaomi Redmi Note 3 Pro and the Galaxy Note 5 but stayed below the Galaxy A5 and A7 2016. The continuous usage benchmark PC Mark revealed 8 hours and 23 minutes. I expected more here to be honest but still it's top 30 material. We beat the Galaxy Note 5 and the Galaxy S7 which is quite good but scored below the Huawei Nova Plus and Yumi Max. Charging was also measured and we achieved 1% after 5 minutes of charging, 13% after 15 minutes, 26% after 30 minutes and 50% after 1 hour. In the end for a 5000 mAh battery, a full charge in 2 hours and 48 minutes is quite good. Now other than that we also have special options for the battery and I mean settings here. We go here, we go to the battery and there's power saving control with options for CPU power saver, screen power saver, network connection and vibrate. You can restrict some of the CPU and screen options to make you save some juice. In the end a solid battery if you want to refer this as a mid ranger. If you're talking about a battery phone we expect it a little bit more. On the acoustic front we seem to have two speakers at the bottom as usual they're not two they're just for the sake of the symmetry of the holes. This is the actual speaker here on the right side but we do have two players you can opt for google play music here or the pre-installed and antique looking music and we also have the option to mess around with two equalizer either the stock one which is this one with the typical five custom channels here genre settings pace boost and surround sound or you can go with the dts one we have DTS technology here and we got um, its activation of course, bass and treble with a special slider for those and profiles, effect profiles, movie, music and podcasts. Enough with the talking, let's listen to some tunes. Ok, conclusions, we got a pretty loud sound, it's also clear sounding, there's no distortion and the high notes were well rendered. I did not like the bass though, could have been more bass here but luckily we have the settings. There's FM radio in the mix and we also did a decibel meter test and let's see what came out of that adventure. And here we go here and we achieved a value of 85.5 decibels at the front and back of the phone using an acoustic sample that we usually use and then when we ran the game you saw before Riptide GP Renegade we achieved as high as 93.1 decibels which is very solid it's certainly top 15 material or even top 10 from all the phones we've tested and it goes past the Sony Xperia XA and the Lenovo K6 but scores below the Le Echo Li Max 2 so overall pretty good acoustics time to talk about the camera 13 megapixel shooter here at the back with f2.2 aperture, face detection autofocus and LED flash 13 megapixel also at the front with f2.2 aperture and let's see just how fast the camera app is able to start I would say reasonably fast not a slug but also not a roadrunner picture taking is quite fast 
the zoom is sometimes fluid, other times finicky, in general it's fluid and the focus is a bit on the slow side, so keep that in mind, wait for it to focus and then take the picture. Options are pretty straightforward, we got front camera, timer and flash, plus some extra settings like aspect ratio, phase detection, grid and HDR, plus extras here like mirror mode and filming in full HD and then we got the actual main options on the right side. We got the effects, we got your panorama, slow motion, video, photo, pro mode with white balance, ISO, focus and shutter, time lapse and finally something groovy, multi exposure, light painting, electronic aperture, slow shutter, star track, video maker, trajectory, DNG and clone. These are actually gimmicks, um, you'll uh, take a while before you actually get to use them, so you have to learn to use them first. Some of them involve simply overlapping two pictures and highlighting uh, multiple exposures, so like this one here. Other ones play with the shutter and some of them simply draw a trajectory of a car passing by, for example. That's it in a nutshell, the options area. Time to go to the gallery and see how this set of cameras did in our test. So over 100 pics taken during the day and let's see what we are dealing with here. So it was a cloudy day of March, but we registered good focus in close-ups and in the distance. It's a pragmatic camera, it uh, is able to capture colors in the real nature, does not deform colors, which is nice. Every once in a while we did have a blurred shot, but this was rather on account of the fact that uh, uh, by default the capture on touch option is activated so when you touch the screen you take a capture and you do not have time to focus deactivate that and you get rid of the blur quite good details in landscape shots and pretty good close-ups some over sharpening here and there and when you zoom in you will lose some details but uh, at the first level of zoom it's quite decent the best thing about the phone is the texture of objects which is very well caught both in the distance and close up Pretty good colors and texture here again and I promised you a close-up or two so first we got this one here and then we got a locket which should be pretty impressive this one excellent close-up and then we proceeded to another part of the park here we have the HDR which makes the things a little bit too white here as well it's as if the thunderstruck regular shot HDR shot it's a bit too much What's really okay about the phone is the dynamic range, so even with the sun in front or at the back, we have absolutely no problem with the dynamic range. And as you can see, once again, the focus and the colors are quite solid. You can zoom in to details all you want and you will be happy with the results, both here and on the PC. I would find this above the average Chinese phones priced at around $100 or $150, and only slightly below the Huawei Nova and about on par with the Motorola Moto M, for example. Now the selfies, they're in a separate folder, believe it or not, and excuse my hair because it was a very, and I mean very windy day, but I like the standard beautifying effect that the camera applies, it's sort of like a crayon filter, I'm happy with the texture of the face, of the hair, and even the background was pretty okay. So in the end, a pretty good selfie camera, a bit above my expectations to be frank. Now this was daytime capture, let's see nighttime capture and let's find it first here we go at last and i was actually surprised by this one i was expecting something reasonable but it's a pleasant surprise good texture again nice lighting and pretty good colors the flash not that impressive some blur here and there but who doesn't blur shots at night when you're talking about a phone that costs so little and uh, we got some pretty okay nighttime halos for the light sources. Pretty solid details once again in landscapes and close-ups. And we don't have that problem with violet or blue hues that some other phones have. So we're lucky we don't have that problem. Good focus, some fog here and there but great lighting and color so keep that in mind. Surprising nighttime capture, actually quite good. Now we're done with the photos, time to talk about the videos. They're also separate, luckily. It was a very windy day, I said that before. And uh, here we go. The microphone was quite good, even in spite of the wind. We filmed in MP4 format, 30 frames per second and 17 mega per second, full HD of course. When you zoom in, you lose a lot of details, but in general I was happy with the clarity, with the colors and even the focus, although there was a bit of focus loss here and there. And this is a video taken in very harsh conditions. We got a lot of clouds and some sun. 
that appears from them. We got water, we got the wind, so everything is against the phone and still it manages a pretty good Full HD video capture. Solid exposure change, some nice colors. If it weren't for the refocus, I would be even more happy with the capture. Some more colors here, handled well. And we even tested the stabilization. There is no optical stabilization here and apparently the electronic one is also quite lacking. In the end, I would say it's a reasonable phone capture-wise. It can find the mid-range Huawei's, for example. And now let's see what it can do during the night time. And nighttime videos should also be here somewhere. Here we go. Once again, it's quite okay for a mid-range. The streetlight halos are a bit big, but the lighting was okay in general. Nice clarity, pretty okay focus. Somehow the focus didn't have the problems from the day, don't ask me why. I didn't meet as much refocus at night during, as I did during the day. And of course, when you zoom in, you lose quite a few details. In the end, it beats most of the phones from China that are sold below $200, so keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about the web browser. This is the pre-installed one. If you don't like it, no problem, you can opt for Chrome. Let's load up gsndome.com. As you can see, not the fastest in the world and still loading, which is confirmed by the modest benchmarks like Velamo and SunSpider. That's our website. And input is done via stock virtual keyboard. On the connectivity front, time to talk about the connectivity. We've got a USB Type-C port here. There is a Wi-Fi BGNAC Bluetooth 4.1. This is a dual SIM phone with a hybrid slot. There is GPS. There is no trace of NFC, just in case you were wondering. And we got LTE category 6 and support for Vo LTE. Go to the dialer and you'll find a option to record calls, as far as I know. SMS polite decline, call record as I was saying before, and the calls are actually pretty loud and clear, and the signal was good, plus the microphone, it handled the wind, and it handled me during the talk. Time to see what the connectivity speeds are, and we did a speed test, worry not, and here we go. So, we achieved up to 48 mega per second in download via Wi-Fi, 25 mega per second upload, also Wi-Fi. In 4G, 46 mega per second download, 45 mega per second upload. I would say we are well within the normal limits and no problem in this area. Time to discuss the OS, UI and applications. We're running Android Marshmallow here with Nubia UI 4.0 on top. Some nice icons here. The general styling and vibe remind me of the Xiaomi Mi UI but it's drawn by a smarter engineer, so to say. So, something interesting here, and this is the home button, and this is the back button, and this is actually a menu button, and if you want to trigger the multitasking, keep the back button pressed. This multitasking with the horizontally scrolling thingy reminds me of the older Emotion UI approach from Huawei, and if you swipe up from here, you trigger the mini launcher. Basically, you have two desktops, and you can use two apps at the same time. I can use the web browser and the calendar, for example, if I go to the calendar and press back, I go here and I can phone somebody while I'm browsing the web and then I can go back again and uh, maybe open an app, check out the email, I keep browsing the web and that's that. So that's it in a nutshell, you can play around with two desktops, so that's quite nice to have here with a mini launcher. Drop down portion, quite straightforward notifications and quick settings. These are the settings and if you press the menu button, you can tweak the lock screen, excuse me, the home screen with settings, with wallpapers and widgets, which aren't half bad. Some stock, some from Nubia and this is one of them, sort of a photo frame, it's quite nice. Okay, um, another interesting thing here is the settings area, connectivity settings, display, notification center, edge gestures, which you saw before. So swipe like this or do other swipes and you can trigger a variety of features, which are quite a few here. Okay, so other than that, features. We got the screen split up, which you saw before. And you can play games while you social networking, watch videos while chatting. We got custom button key, this area here. We got touch gestures smart sensing, dual instance, twin applications on the desktop and super screenshot, which let's not go over it too soon. Uh, it's simple screenshot and also video screenshot, so you can record video from the screen of your device. 
Other than that, we go to the fingerprint identification. So we already have a fingerprint set up. Retain. And you have to secure it with a pin. By the way, the fingerprint input requires about 10 steps and it's quite fast. And let's see just how fast the unlock is. So put my finger here. Let's try again. Okay, and 90 degrees this time. Not the fastest in the world, but it works in the end. About one second and a half or so. This time it was faster. So that's about it. Pretty accurate and pretty nice. As you can see, there is no app drawer here. And we have a pretty reasonable number of pre-installed apps. I say reasonable because I'm used to 50 apps. And this time we're at 37 apps. And so we got the usual Google package. There is a calendar. And there are a bunch of tools. Pretty straightforward if you ask me. Edge gestures and FM radio are a plus. Sound recorder. There's accelerate, which is quite useful. There's a notepad that reminds me of the note application uh, from uh, iOS. And aside from that, we have support screenshot, user manual, touch pal, and that's about it. This is the Nubia N1. It's time for the pros and cons of the phone in the verdict section. So on the pro side, we got a good screen. Uh, we got a solid design, okay performance considering the price tag and a mid-mid ranger. There is no lag. We got okay charge time for a battery phone and an overall good battery for a mid-range handset solid acoustics, lots of camera options and a pretty nice looking and useful user interface and the nighttime capture with the camera was actually a pleasant surprise. Now uh, as far as the cons are concerned, frankly speaking I wanted more battery, there are some blurred shots here and there, a bit of refocusing on the video and the phone is a bit heavy for the average user and the stabilization or lack of is a problem when shooting videos. Now, uh, as far as the verdict goes, this Nubia phone is quite the achiever. It does not want to be called a mid-ranger. Uh, it does not want to be called a battery phone. It's instead a mid-range phone with a very good battery. So in the end, good selfies, good camera at the night time, no lag. It can handle gaming and it's something special that can charge up your phone and last for days on end. That's the Nubia N1. It's something different and it stands out also through this shiny red ring below the screen and also those very nice gestures from the side which really got to me this has been the review of the nubia n1 here at gsmdom.com bye bye